Elephant in the Room is an anarchist radio show from Dresden, in Europe, where we talk with activists from all around the world about politics, life and universe. Airing every second and fourth Monday of the month on Color Radio. You can find the podcast version of the show on the Channel Zero Network or on your favorite podcast platform. From activists for activists. Welcome back to the Color Radio and to the elephant in the room. Today in the studio, we have a friend and a comrade from France, Bike Punk. Hey, what's up? I'm fine. You're fine. That's great. Me too. I'm also doing fine. Um, Bike Punk is an activist, a tech activist who participate in this or that project, um, also working on the network independence and I think loves tech or maybe he hates tech. I mean, we were talking a little bit about that you do the work that you also hate. Um, can you explain a little bit to our listeners what the fuck are you doing? Like, what is the network independence? And Whoa, that's a long topic. Uh, so I'm volunteering for a DIY internet service provider called Elise in France. It means uh, free internet uh, Lyon and Saint-Etienne. And basically we do the same work as a commercial internet service provider side doing we connect the people to the internet but we don't have any problem with budget since we are volunteers and so we can get connections where the commercial isps internet service providers uh, consider is not um, profitable amongst other things also we are somehow activists so we defend um, free speech and fight against censorship and surveillance we do all these things and we have a network of such isps in france and belgium and switzerland like french-speaking europe called uh, federation fdn which is ffdn.org the website it's all in english there i mean you have french and english language on the website to get information and yeah we do a lot of uh, political work with the quadrature du net which you might have heard about i have not it sounds something like a french oh you have not thing. heard of no never heard of it's like collective of um activists trying to fight the new law about uh, again about surveillance and censorship and everything on the internet in France like and being quite active for the last 10 years that's actually what i wanted to ask as a diy service provider mm -hmm. there is a lot of there are a lot of regulations on the french level but also on the level of european union Mm -hmm. with this upload filters bullshit, which, I mean, most probably you're not doing the websites, but as an example of the things that are happening there on the European level, what kind of regulations are actually affecting you? And as a activist collectives, do you try to resist those? Do you try to say, okay, fuck you, we're not giving information on our um, users and so on? We are like legal organizations and we respect the law we are uh, supposed to. Uh, we try to fight the law we don't like all the way we can. Like, for example, uh, we have this f fight for the last six or seven years against the... Um, what the name in English? <laughs> uh, data retention of the providers, mm -hmm. which the European Union is actually against. But a lot of different states like to have those data is available for surveillance. So we went to the European court a few times and every single time the European, European court is saying that, yeah, the, those people are right and the state is wrong and we shall not keep the data of the people. This is massive surveillance and this is not democracy. And friends say, hey, fuck you. We like this. We need to, that for terrorism, you know, all those terrorists in the streets and... The bad things. Yeah, the bad things. So, 
Yeah, like the the last episode of this fight was the French uh, court, like Supreme Court. I don't know the, how to say that in English. Really important court. Yeah, That's very important. That's how you translate it into English. Yeah. yeah. Said... Yeah, we understood that the European Union consider this is human rights viol violation and we shall not do that. But this is a um, national security issue. So we'll do it anyway. And that's it. And then, like, nothing happens. So they just keep on going. Yeah. That's it. All right. Um, what kind of information do you have to provide in France to, to the... Like, what is the surveillance state um, demands from you on people? Uh, we're connecting people. So we have a database of the um, users with contacts. And we are supposed to be able to tell the police and the justice uh, who was using the connection this day at this time. This is only question so far we are supposed to reply as an internet service provider. And so, yeah, if we have the proper request, we reply them. That we don't like it. It doesn't happen so often. And we um, explain our users that if they want uh, to escape this surveillance, Tor is a uh, good stuff. So you're doing some kind of education program also sometimes for the people? Yeah. I personally do, and also the um, ISP sometimes is doing it. Out. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned that some of the things you're doing, the bigger service providers don't see as profitable. Like, can you give an examples of what kind of things that are not really profitable that you're doing and kind of benefits the community? The thing with we are very useful on the French um, territory in that. A lot of uh, big parts in France are like not dense as uh, inhabitants. Like people are living in isolated houses far away, from one from each other. And so to to get fibers there, it's uh, profitable in like six to ten years. And that's not an issue for modern capitalism. Like, no. They won't do it. Too long. It was, it, yeah, it's too long. And so we try to figure out how we connect those people. The, sometimes we put some fibers, but this is a mess, and we don't do it so often, unfortunately. But the rest of the time we try to make a radio network with Wi-Fi equipment, like yeah, Wi-Fi antennas. And yeah, maybe... In, it, looks like what Freifunk is doing in Germany. And what is actually the reaction of people to that? Like, they love you, they yes. adore you, yes. they really, like, carry you on hands from one point to another. They're making little churches. They're making little churches, <laughs> yeah. like, for, for the internet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's crazy. It's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> It's good that you specify that. Yeah. All right. So... Um, I think we will make a break. Mm -hmm. You you um, brought us some fancy music, and then we will come back and talk a little bit more about IT stuff, tech okay. stuff. Yeah. Modem. Je veux mon modem. Je veux mon modem Communication breakdown Pour me reconnecter Je veux mon modem Je veux mon modem Ma mat modem Il me faut mon modem Mon modem Je veux mon modem Communication breakdown Pour me reconnecter Je veux mon Yeah. 
That was Charles de Gaulle mm -hmm. with a song that is talking about really serious problems for the people, about the modem. Yeah, they lost the connection. They lost the connection. I think a lot of people are freaking out this year, and these days, not this year, if there is no internet connection. Right, we are talking today about tech activism in general, and we have a friend here who is talking about that and um, spoke a little bit about the network independence and kind of DOI network providers in France. I would love to ask you, why the fuck on earth are you doing that? Like, what is your motivation at the end of the day? Do you have like a proclamation, like a communist manifesto? <laughs> or or you think like, we're doing that because this needs to be done and that's it? The main reason I'm doing that is because the... Um, We cannot let that in the hands of the capitalists for profit. Like network is, in my opinion, is a common good, like water and air. And we have to take care of it. And if we cannot let the companies taking take care of that, like they don't do it the way we want. <laughs> and it's easier to set up an internet service provider than to set up the water for a city or a road network. <laughs> so I'm doing what I can. <laughs> so you're doing the easiest way. Yeah. You're not doing the water prov provision. No. Right. And the people around you, I mean, I know that you are some weird anarchist bike punk stuff, mm -hmm. but the people around you who are doing that, how much of them, for them, this is a political thing and how much is it just doing something that is not as complicated as water provision? Like, do you profit something actually from, from the whole thing? Or this is purely volunteer and just for your soul? If you have one, this is a different discussion. <laughs> uh, how would I... I don't profit anything as a person. That's for sure. I lose a lot of time. 
watching all those routers and computers and cables. This is also a way to be considered seriously by the um, regulators when we discuss things, because we also discuss with them. And we are not just random people having ideas. We are like running networks. We're serious. Yeah, we are serious. We have people at the end of the line using... <laughs> Did they see you actually like talking about serious? Myself. Yes. No. Like you're sitting on the table and talking to some. Yeah. I, I'm not going personally to discuss with them. All right. Uh, some other people more serious than me go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm like now my biggest effort is to spread the information and the knowledge of how the fact the internet is working and how the people can as much power to set it up in themselves and be autonomous in that way. And that's a lot of work. Not so many people are interested and it needs some time. So you have to catch the people, sit them down, show them a lot of things. And like, ooh, that's a lot. And no, no, come, say, we'll have some nice cake and tea. <laughs> so you're like this annoying friend that is always coming and just talking about network. And the internet. And punk rock. Yes, and wine. And wine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> how did it actually start? Like, how did it come to your head? Like, it wouldn't come to my head at any point in my life, although I'm, like, connected with the tech, to start an internet service provider. At first, it was from a conference, some um, guy doing this uh, internet service provider stuff, volunteering was having and it was very interesting and it, it, it inspired me but I had other business to do and then I moved in a city in Toulouse where I was back then living in squats and so you don't know how long you will stay and to, and it was before the mobile networks and the um, it was before the mobile networks like it was 90s no before the internet stuff on mobiles like again okay, 2g 3g yeah 4g 5g 6g <clears throat> so not everyone had uh, internet on the pocket back then and it it was not making so much sense to uh, get a landline to the um, squatted place because you don't know if you will be there next week and it's a lot of money and effort and like so i went to the um, and the local internet service provider was just set up a few months before. So I went to this guy and was like, oh, I see you're doing some things with antennas and radios at work. And can you connect the place I'm living in? And we're like, oh, yeah, we can do that. And how much will it cost? And we're like, oh, we are volunteers. We, we don't need so much money. We, we can make it for free. Oh, that's very nice. <laughs> and how does it work? As I asked. And they replied, hey, come back tomorrow and we'll teach you and you will do it. And that's how I got involved. And then I did that for the last, for the next five years full time. <laughs> so you were also like doing internet providing for the squats yeah. in Toulouse. Yeah. We, I mean, and I also do it in Saint Etienne now, like for free. All right. What do the squatters think about that? They're happy. They can, They're happy. They can watch videos. They can watch the cat, kitten yeah. and Netflix and shit. Yeah. Really useful, really mm -hmm. useful. All right. And do you actually face some kind of repressions or backlash or some, I mean, let's say some problems because at the end of the day, capitalism is quite aggressive and the state is quite aggressive and both don't like competition and in general network is pretty much centralized currently with a lot of, um, big providers playing the major role. I mean, not in France, maybe, because you're looking like really no way, but... France, we have 2,000 uh, operators of the internet. That's a democracy, right? That's yeah. it. It's not really centralized. There are much more op operators and organizations running the internet than the, most of the people are aware of. Mm -hmm. So we are the, some small ones among those 2,000s. And 
Yeah, we, so so far we are too small to get attention, and I mean, on the political level, we and we are doing work, and we speak with the regulators, and we have some court case with uh, against the state. So we have attention on, from this side, but f from the capitalist side, we want just too small. They don't consider us. Like altogether in the federation, we have about three thousand lines all over France, Switzerland, and Belgium. So. Yeah, compared to Orange or... Right. So, uh, we will have a break mm -hmm. for another song. Yeah, a song. Which one? I think this will be Zone Infini, oh. La Guerre. And then we will come back and talk further on. Welcome back. 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 Uh, we are talking today about tank activism. Um, and we were talking about motivation to set up the internet for the people in squats before the mobile network existed, before the internet existed. So you're doing all these amazing things with the network, bringing packages and taking packages from the people and bringing it to the other people. But there is, uh, I think, a deeper influence of what you're doing on society in general, because at the end of the day, internet is shaping our society in a, or the network in the bigger sense, is shaping our society in really a lot of different ways. What is your perspective on that? I think there, are, I mean, there are a lot of people who are in the tech sector disappointed with this or disillusioned with the internet and with the network and they don't want to deal with that anymore and up to the point that they just go to the forest and do their like primitive stuff uh, but you're still doing that so you still most probably believe in what you're doing can you talk a little bit about that indeed like in my opinion the internet is the first time in the history of humans that we have the actual right of um, expression before internet like 
only a very few people had the possibility to spread their ideas. Like you could write some leaflets, but you could spread them. Like if you have a hundred read, it would be like something woo crazy already. And now, like if you ha if you have something interesting to say, then most most probably uh, a few dozen of thousands of people will get the knowledge of that. And you don't need to be a journalist. You don't need to be a writer. You don't need to be a politician. You can be anyone. And if there is anything <clears throat> interesting to say or show, it will it will be widespread. And that's changing the society in an interesting way. And yeah, it's, on the other side, we can see that we don't have control on this and sometimes it, bring, it brings problems but yeah this is uh, how we learn and how the humanity is learning this how to deal with this new tool like this is super new like we, uh, i was born without it when i was a kid the internet was not everywhere like it is now right but i think for me the the point of spreading the ideas is um, quite an interesting discussion as we see that more and more the state players and more and more bigger capitalist players understand the value of spreading the information in the internet and for me internet became for quite some time this place where it, it's basically if you visualize this this is just a crowd of people who are shouting their ideas everybody's shouting their ideas everybody's starting from the kittens and ending up with some conspiracy theories everybody's shouting that but there are certain ways to make your voice louder and as we can see with uh, the trolling campaigns and so on and so forth the the game is reached pretty much like if you're a small person uh, most probably the way or the scale of what people will hear from you is going to be mo smaller than some crazy fucker from Trump campaign or the Trump himself or the new Trump in France, the elections are coming, right? So the internet is now at this point in history, in the social history, is giving quite a lot of new powers to the people who already have power and um, people are adapting. So if we look at that in a little bit different side, of this kind of society dynamics. Internet gave a lot of freedoms for quite some time for the people who were adapting it quite rapidly. And now came this like really crazy and really stupid state machines and capitalist machines that are really slow to catch up with certain things. Uh, but now they're using it to, for their own benefits. And I think for me, again, going back to France, um, the new elections that are coming up in half a year, coming up with also the the new, like the French Trump. What is your perspective on these dangers? Like how much, sp speaking not about the positive side, how much danger does the internet brings to the society and how much danger it is in the future to, to our freedoms at the end of the day? I don't see any danger, actually. Like, for me, internet is like the um, the press to press books. Like, as a tool, uh, as a tool itself, that you can print. Like, uh, the book who has been the most printed is most probably most probably the Bible, and it was invented inv invented for that to print Bibles to uh, widespread this thing. But we can print other. We we can print other things. We can print the some political text and make the revolution with that. Which, like, I can the revolution without printing stuff would be hard, harder in my perspective. And the internet is not just a new technology to share ideas and of course the power the powerful have more power even on the internet that's for sure i don't deny that but the the difference of power between the powerful and the people is not as big as without the internet in my opinion 
like if you if we go back to the 60s or something when you had only the state uh, radio and tv like it was quite hard to have to get something some uh, new ideas in the media and now it's quite doable like yeah mm, and talking about the surveillance state mm. we're talking about surveillance capitalism for me these things actually boosted are boosted by the by the internet mm -hmm. creation of the internet and that's what i was i meant about the dangers because we are looking right now on the 5g as a lot of people see it as a danger to to their brain and to their vaccination or whatever bullshit they have in their heads but in general 5g is also a technology that is required for a lot of things including a mass surveillance Mm -hmm. for all the smart devices and all the shit. Um, what is your attitude towards that? Like, there are certain people who are running around and shouting, this is the end, like, this is going to destroy us all. The surveillance that is built right now through the network, the possibilities for surveillance capitalism, the possibilities for uh, the state to control people, like we see in China, for example, where internet that didn't bring freedoms, it actually, like, limits people in a, in a, in a or maybe brought certain freedoms to the certain groups of people who know how to use the technology. But for a lot of people, it brought a lot of danger. Like a lot of people are prosecuted for what they're writing in the internet stupidly in some WeChat, Wemo, Shmimo, I don't know which Chinese um, app they're using on their smartphones. Um, so what what is your attitude towards that, towards what we see th this technology, this supposed to be liberating technology is now used to actually enforce authoritarian regimes, enforce um, authoritarian concepts, not only in China or in Belarus or in Russia, but also in Europe, yeah, where sure. the, the the censorship is just growing, like boom, 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 boom. Yeah, I see the problem, and that's why I take care of my our small part of the whole thing, like. Uh, we try to use the tools and the technologies that bring the as much freedom as we can, as we <clears throat> as we can, and we have to, and we build an infra infrastructure. So it gives it gives power to our our circles and our communities, even though it's very small. I mean, why not Facebook? Why not any Amazon? Whatever. But we have our independence and we exist and they cannot shut us down so far and yeah i mean this is a form of, re of resistance like yeah but you're not saying hey we ban all the traffic that is surveillance traffic so you're not allowed to use our internet for like your fucking crazy cameras smart devices at home and stuff like that no we are just too liberal for that okay so everybody can use whatever they want yeah. on, on the network mm -hmm. but that's an interesting question like for some big event like a uh, hacker even uh, at some point we set up some uh, wi-fi network with uh, man in the middle uh, exchanging them all the pictures that people w would watch on their websites with kittens, <laughs> like, and the people, uh, because the, a lot of people attending this event were not so much hackers or whatever, and they were like just connecting to some Wi-Fi stuff and were expecting to have like normal internet there. And they were like, what the fuck? How can, how is that possible? And from the... When you provide the internet, you, it's kind of super easy to do that. Like, like it, you don't need to study shit for ages. For it's like super easy and doable, and you can control what people see. And we make them like the those people realize that we have power, and that was an interesting experience. And you figure out that you have power. Like, yeah. We love power. Yeah, exactly. Um, so but you mentioned we want yeah. to share it. That's yeah. the thing. Mm -hmm. 
we want to share this power to, to as much as many people as possible and to have a grassroots people and communities being able to deal with this technical stuff yeah so you mentioned that you provide trainings and also i think in, the, in personal conversations you were mentioning that you were doing some network stuff for the festivals and stuff mm -hmm. um is there any way people can contact you and say hey we would like to have a good network and not just some shit network for our anarchist gathering festival whatever bullshit people are organizing this day yeah the best is to mm, go on the website of the federation ffdn.org like and you have a different way of contacting us email uh, irc wow that's the new technology that's super fresh yeah i've heard about that mm -hmm. using it from time to time <laughs> have to use it from time to time because of people like you yes. who are still using MRC. No, it, it, we have bridges with Matrix for the new people like you. That's like 2021. Uh -huh. right? Okay, so we will listen to one more song and then we will jump to another tech activist topic okay. that you don't want to talk about. I'm making, I'm going to make you talk about. Um, so we're going to listen to Radical Kitten and uh, with the song Say Shit to Your Boss. the topic that you don't want to talk and I want you to talk. I know that you were working for some time as a volunteer for the Wikimedia, Wikipedia, yeah. Wiki something. Um, and this is a, quite a topic in the modern society. I'm going to share my experience about Wikipedia. This is my like trauma mm -hmm. because I didn't use it so much. And there was there were some points when I had to use it for, we thought, okay, this is a really important event that we are going to cover, or this is an important political group that we're going to cover. So go registered, started writing some stuff um, on Wikipedia, and then it got deleted because people said thought that it's politically not important. Um, for me, now it comes to the question, as you were working there, 
how was it like what was your political motivation to participate in such a massive project that was supposed to be the mecca of knowledge but turned into in many cases a shitstorm of political discussions my main motivation was to fix things like when things are not the, in the good way you have the choice of not doing anything or you can try to fix it and wikipedia is quite easy to fix at least in the french and english community you just have to learn the rules and as long as you respect the rules and your contrib contributions are there and they stay and yeah i wish i could fix more things it's that easy <laughs> in the world Uh, in a personal talk, you were also mentioning that French Wikipedia community is a little bit challenging and the yeah. English one isn't easy going. Um, can you explain what is the challenging side? I mean, I'm talking about a little bit like NGOs, that this is challenging and this is shit and this is good. Like, what is the problem with, for you in, in that community? I don't know that the French community is not as um I'm looking for my words uh strict at the English one in in English Wikimedia you in Wikipedia you cannot get any information without any source that won't work ever but as long as there is some proper source then it stays And in French, it's not that it is not that strict, and yeah, you can find way around. And a lot of like half of French Wikipedia, Wikipedia is not sourced decently. And yeah, some people are trying to to push their uh, ideals, and there are some arguments. Yeah, like uh, from a political side, the French community had a very big argument like two years ago, I think I remember, about the feminization of the language, which is now a common thing for among the um, French society to break the masculinization rules of writing French. And so we had a um, debate in the community, shall we do it and how shall we do it if we decide to do it? And as well, I, I was actually expecting um, some interesting debate and like uh, arguments for and against it. And, and we got a shit storm, like a fucking shit storm. I realized that that's internet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the I realized that most of the like the the majority of the contributors are just uh, conservative assholes, and they hap like they are happy to keep the world as it is, and they want to change it, and then. Yeah, and I was really disappointed. So now it's forbidden to uh, not to use uh, uh, non-masculine French. We gave the French. It's debate. forbidden. Yeah, it's forbidden. Make a decision. Yeah, and actually, if you do it, then it will be fixed in the next few hours. Like some people are really surveilling it, like super hard. Grammanatis. Yeah, <laughs> we have them. <laughs> <laughs> And talking about like politicization of the whole project, is there any way to address it? Because I think, as I remember at the beginning of Wikipedia, there was this naive belief that Wikipedia as it exists is some kind of a independent bipartisan, like it includes everything. It doesn't censor and stuff. Um, but now we see that there is a lot of this shitstorm discussions 
especially like in the history sections that are having certain type of contextualizing history because history is the story and it depends the way you tell it um, what are their conclusions of it is there talking about the french and english um, wikipedia is there any um, process to address that like political debates or to, to avoid this shitstorm like is there any way wikipedia project is trying to address the political contradictions within the community not as i'm aware of like i i don't know and i didn't see like you have all those discussion pages you you have a room for debate and actually people debate there like seriously but like you have like when the content is uh, touchy or non consensual most of the time the pages are locked for editing and some you need some special right to to edit but we didn't find and i mean the, so far we didn't find any better solution but right. I, i think it's open for proposal so the page of emmanuel macron is closed right? i don't know i didn't check all right um but you left i know that you left wikipedia at some point in your life and you said that now you're editing a little bit from time to time yeah. why why did you like put the energy there and then you thought okay fuck it i, I don't want to do this anymore oh, no, like the because i was part of the um, wikimedia france organization and this is full bullshit like the i don't know on the international wide uh, level if it's any better but the french one is just full bullshit they i don't know how to say that like they have tons of money they don't know what to do with it uh I don't know. It was I mean I, it was really not my community and my way of doing things. For example, I'm really not uh feeling good about the Wikimedia France uh, having this project like Wiki for Africa and is like the fucking French community is is making colonization again for Africa through the knowledge and through wikipedia and it's like come on no i mean this is wrong we, sh we should not do that like what we, we are bringing knowledge to the poor people of africa that they, they cannot make it themselves like no damn you cannot say that this is racist <laughs> <laughs> and they don't see it and they cannot admit it so i'm yeah all right so you jump off the boat but talking also a bit in the same way we were talking about the internet what is your perspective on the role or what is your perspective on the power of wikipedia project in the modern society in the modern community as it is right now with all this diy notion that you can create information and you can edit information and you can participate in those debates and so on i don't know i mean it's open and people can do things there like and anyone like really and uh, one of the problem is that uh, too few people are part participating actually like wikipedia project would be much more interesting if we had 10 times more uh, editors and yeah that would make it more grassroots or whatever i mean like so I, i'm doing my part <laughs> i try to get some people take part in it also and that's it so you mean people should participate in wikipedia in everything like people who are listening to this uh, to this podcast they're just like 
get your ass up and get registered in Wikipedia and start writing for Wikipedia. Yeah. Important information. Put, put there what you want there to be. Yeah. And you have the you have the possibility to do it and it's easy. Like, come on. This is too important too important not to do it. All right. But I think for me talking about Wikipedia also includes a lot of bizarre politicization of um, information. So if you look at the Wikipedia article about Gulag system, for example, mm -hmm. really charged if Stalin was right, if Stalin was wrong um, story, and you compare it in the different languages, it's really different. Indeed. And the same way, if you look at the Second World War page, if you look at the history of colonization, mm -hmm. if you look at the history of other conflicts, or if you look at the history of the modern rolling conflicts, like for example, the war in Ukraine, between Russia and Ukraine, um, all of this is, is having so many different shades um, that it is becoming once again, one part of the internet is, it is becoming one part of internet that is just enforcing the views of the political elites that are existing already there. As for example, in Russia, you have the fabric of trolls that are working on social networks, but also working in Wikipedia projects. So they would be the people who are just going crazy. They are sitting there every day, um, they're working hours and editing articles that are supposed to have a specific narrative, like shaping basically the narrative. Did people in, in, in Wikipedia community in France discuss that, like how to deal with the people who are contributing, not because they are doing things out of their beliefs and they're contributing information that they know is true rather than they are using Wikipedia for disinformation. Um, yeah, this is addressed and the organization itself is tracking those um, behaviors. And yeah, when, when it's obvious, the people get banned. Like... But most of the time they're, they're doing it in a good way and it's not that obvious and it's quite hard to make the difference between some trolls paid and some random people. But there is an effort in that way. And yeah, I've seen some conference about that, like of the people sharing their experience of tracking the... Russians. No. The Ruskies on the network. <laughs> not the Russians. The Russians are not making so much mess in the French Wikipedia and I'm a, as I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, hey, thanks a lot for mm -hmm. this conversation. Yeah. I hope more people will get actually interested in participating in the network independence movement and setting up their own networks eventually. And then one day internet will be independent from the fucking orange and what a fun. It is independent already. In some places. In some places it's not. Yes. So, um, one day we will all live in a beautiful world where the flowers grow and the internet is free. The and, internet is free and the flowers are already and, growing. And Wikipedia <laughs> is edited not by trolls, but rather like by the people who want to bring knowledge to everybody. And we all love each other and the revolution no. happened. No, 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 no. No? Not love to each other. Okay, no love to each other. Um, hatred to each other. Yes. Like proper punks. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. In a couple of years, we can get back and see how much I hate internet and how much hope you still have in it. <laughs> and we can decide, okay, you or I were um, correct about what is happening with this shit created by the 5G networks and the NSA and all the shit. We have to, we have to do our part. We have to do our parts. Yes, I've heard that um, a lot. Still doing my part. And you're doing your part. And we are all doing our part. Uh, we will end up with uh, another song. The last French song for today. Thanks a lot for listening. Stay tuned. And see you on the barricades. And stay cool. Don't forget that. Maman, je suce des bites et j'aime ça. 